Pass paper questions. Draw a truth table to prove the following. A nor B is the same as not A and not B. So how do we get about drawing this truth table? Well, the first thing is we need the headings. The easiest thing to do is put A and B as separate values, then have a heading for A nor B, and then have a heading for not A and not B. Now, you could have, if you wanted to, expanded on these columns. You could have had a not A column, a not B column, and then your not A and not B column, just to make sure that you worked out the values properly. You don't get any extra marks for that. You just do what makes it simple for you. So for our first values of A and B, 0, 0, so both of them are off, A nor B gives us 1, and not A and not B gives us 1 as well. Now you might have noticed if this is true, we're going to get the same values in both those columns. So let's move on uh, to A being 0 and B being 1. A nor B gives us 0 and not A and not B gives us 0 also. 1 and 0 for A and B, we get the same outputs. Again, both of these are working on situations where both these values need to be the same for us to get any sort of output out of it. And the final one, 1 and 1 for both, we're going to get zeros. So you can see there that it has proved this to be the case because both those columns are identical. Another truth table now, a classic De Morgan's question. Use a truth table to prove De Morgan's law. And this is the not A or B is the same as not A and not B. Now, in this case at year 13, you don't get the truth tables drawn out for you to fill in. You don't get any sort of idea about how you're meant to go about this. So what do we need to do? Well, think about your headings once again. We need A and B, and all the possible combinations of A and B should be written underneath. And then you take out the separate parts. Not A or B, not A, not B, and then not A and B. Exactly like that worked activity we did for the opposite De Morgan's Law. So where A and B are 0, not A or B becomes 1. We flip A and B, and not A and not B becomes 1 as well. Where A is 0 and B is 1, not A or B becomes 0. Not A becomes 1 and not B becomes 0 because it flips those values. And therefore, not A and not B is 0 as well. Where A is 1 and B is 0, not A or B becomes 0. Not A is 0, not B is 1. And then once again, not A and not B is 0 because those values aren't both 1. Where A and B are 1, not A or B are 0 because it inverts the normal all. Not A is an inversion of A, which is 0. Not B is an inversion of B, which is 0. And therefore, not A and not B is also 0. And how do you prove it? Well, the columns for the expressions are identical. The third and final columns have the same output. So the way the mark scheme breaks that down is we get a mark for the correct left-hand side, a mark for correct column not A and correct column not B, and a mark for correct column not A and not B. So, there's, so I think there's one very nice mark here for the not A and the not B columns, and the rest of it is just working it out step by step. Of course, if you wanted more columns, you could have done that as well. Next question, we'll start with part A. Simplify the following using De Morgan's law and Boolean identities. Identify which law identity you are using. So this is always the one that I find quite tricky, remembering the names of the law. Uh, because I think that people tend to internalize the methods quite easily, but remembering which particular method they're using can be a bit problematic. Now, if it doesn't ask you particularly to identify it, you don't need to do so. In this question, they have, so we do. But it's three marks, so it should be a simple simplification. So starting, we've got a not A and B there, and the most obvious thing to do is just apply De Morgan's Law. That will split those items up, into a not A or not B. And then you should be able to see that if you rearrange things a little bit, you can use the Boolean identity law, not A and A is equal to one, to remove both of those A's from the equation. Removing both those A's leaves us with not B plus one. And then of course we can apply the Boolean identity, which is uh, not B plus one becomes one. And we end up with a value of one as the actual simplification of this equation. Part B, simplify the following expression using Boolean identities and rules. Note that this time it's not asked us to name the identities and rules we're using. It's a higher mark question, which means there's a lot more simplification to do, but we have to worry less about the names of each of the rules as we do it. So one of the first things we tend to do is expand the brackets. So that gives us A and B and not B, or A and B and C, or B and C 
or B. Straight away you can see that B and not B cancel each other out. So we've got A and 0 and A and 0 or A and B and C. And then we can almost factorize out the B there and make sure that we've taken that out and we've got a bracketed expression. Because doing that all in one go means that the simplifications become much more straightforward. The moment you've got a 0 or a 1 in the expression, you know you're onto a winner with simplification. So we know that something and 0 is always equal to 0. So we can get rid of that a and 0. And we know that 0 or anything is just the expression itself. So we can get rid of that entire section. On the right hand side, c or 1 is just 1. And b and 1 is just itself. So we simplify it down again to just being a and b and c or b. Now there's a common factor to both those expressions which is b. So let's factorize that out. So we've got b and a and c or 1. And again, as soon as we've got a 1 or a 0 in it, we know we're onto a winner. We know that anything and 1 just becomes 1. And so that gives us b and 1. And we'll know that b and 1 just gives us b. So that entire complex expression boiled down to just being b. Now, I won't lie to you, these sort of simplifications require practice. You need to go and identify as many of these questions as possible, get as many of them as you can get your hands on, and just work your way through them, practicing and practicing and practicing. You will notice the repetition appear. You will notice certain things being there over and over again. And certainly, after enough practice, you'll be able to start simplifying them down to ones and zeros and removing those elements as quickly as you can.